Well, hello everybody and welcome to this episode of oh, Off-Grid Ways. Yeah, that's right. Off-Grid Ways, G-Bears Homestead in the Desert. And uh, this is what we got going. You see all my buckets lined up here. Well, we had rain all day yesterday. And uh, it was never really super, super heavy, but there was some pretty good rain coming down. So I got buckets collecting water off of all these drip edges. And I'm about to put up this, um, this piece of gutter on this uh, shed here. And then I'll have it run into that one bucket over on this side and uh, catch water off of there too. Because right now you can see it's nice and clear and blue with the wind blowing and uh, it's not bothering me because I'm on the other side of the cabin, but the forecast is for starting tonight and going all the way through Thursday and possibly Friday, we're supposed to have rain every day. And I've been out working, but as you can see, the clouds are starting to build in now. So, and it's getting cold very quickly. Uh, I wish I could show you all the snow that they got in those mountains yesterday, but uh, it's too hazy over there to see it right now. And uh, they might even be getting some more snow showers right now from those clouds. But the storm is due uh, later today, so I'm going to get through everything here before that happens. And I set myself up with some work on the inside of the container. And I got some wooden there to uh, heat up the... Um, pot belly stove. I was running that yesterday too when I was in there and uh, it keeps things warm in there. Anyway, the water that was running off of these gave me about an inch in each bucket. It's not much, but I'll pour all of those together and get a full bucket out of there. And that's a couple of days of uh, plant watering for my indoor plants. Now that bucket over there is uh, probably half full and that's because that seam in that gutter right there is leaking. And it looks like it dropped down on me for some reason. I'll have to get up there and see what's going on, but not until after the rains are gone. In the meantime, that's good just as it is. All right. So let's see what else we've got going here. My plants inside the, uh, the garden house over there are really loving the rain. And look at, there's green popping up all over the desert. And in the early morning before the sun gets out, when you look across the desert floor, it's like a light pea green coloring all the way across. And underneath every one of these bushes, there's grass growing. And uh, I had the uh, girls out today, uh, free ranging, and they went around and they ate up all the grass they could find. And uh, some of the little birds are doing the same thing. But uh, the other thing I did over here, the girls think I'm bringing them food, but I already brought you your treats. I added that uh, little hood over the top of the feeder to keep the rain off of it so uh, they can uh, get underneath there and uh, get their food because they, they huddle underneath here when it's raining heavy, although a couple of them will wander out and do their thing. Then they get inside of that, uh, that blue barrel I gave them. That blocks the wind. And the wind's coming from the back side of that right now, so they kind of like having that blockage. And uh, in the summertime, that will also give them shade over there because the sun changes its, its uh, shift and it comes up in a different area and goes down in a different area. All right. Let's move on over to container number one because I made some promises to some people, and I'm going to keep those right now. Whew. Before I step in, I'm going to show you all the way down there by the power lines. You can hear the dirt bikes now. Those are all dirt bikers that came up here. And probably the reason that they're up here right now they're, is they're all practicing. Because uh, this month, I think it's the 18th, 19th, and 20th. Um, that would be Friday, Saturday, Sunday, if, it, if I'm not mistaken of January 2019 is the Adelanto Grand Prix and that's down the road from here but uh, uh, they're probably out here practicing because 
up there they actually set it up now inside of the stadium and they, you start in the stadium and finish in the stadium but um, they go out through the open desert and they have all kinds of uh, um, obstacles they have to ride over with like firewood piles that are chopped down and stuff like that so it's pretty interesting if you're in the area and you get a chance go to the Adelanto Grand Prix check it out all right let's step inside here where it's about 30 degrees warmer. Oh my God, that's nice. All right, here we go. Forever North I was asking. Um, soldering irons. This is the one I prefer right here. And I'll show you the label on the side here. I'll give you a second to copy that stuff down. Okay. So I like this one. It's a Wellerman. And uh, you have a control, a heat control here, and then you're on off, and then your sponge, uh, that's for cleaning your tip in between soldering. And then it's got this uh, heat resistant uh, holder there to, so you have a place to set it. And when you buy one of those, it'll come with some rosin core solder, which is right here. And uh, I use that every now and then, but uh, this is what I prefer to use right here. This is organic core solder, and uh, that's a five pound roll, but uh, you can see I've had it pulled out of there and I've been working with it. Let me turn the words up correctly so that you can get a read on those. And I'll give you a second to copy those down. Of course, you can always go back through the video and freeze it so that you can uh, copy this information down. That's the uh, organic core solder. Uh, solder. And uh, you want to use that when you're doing electronics. Okay. And you see a couple little alligator clips here. And what I keep those around for is uh, if you are soldering diodes like this, and uh, this is, see the arrows there, it tells you the, the direction of electricity flow. Um, if, you're, if you're soldering diodes, here's some smaller ones in here, and the, uh, the stripe tells you which side is the positive end on these things. I don't know if you can see that. These are sensitive to heat, so you want to keep your heat down on your solder, and then you can always clip one of these onto the wire to disperse heat so it doesn't go into the diode. Uh, that's what those are for. Another handy thing to have is over on this side. This is a little hands-free uh, unit with a magnifying glass for those smaller solder jobs when you really got to get in there. And you can clip two components together. The wire is touching in the center. This is dirty. I'm sorry. It's out here in the dust. And I just pulled it out of a box and it's been sitting up in that box for months since the uh, move up here. But uh, this thing can adjust all different ways and... Um, you can hold things together, get, free up your hands so that you can solder and, and do a good job. Now, you'll see a lot of this stuff laying around. This was a, uh, a Bluetooth speaker, and um, the uh, charging port on it was damaged. Somebody tried to force the charging uh, USB charging wire in upside down and broke it out. And I wanted to see what was inside, so I opened it up, and uh, I'll... Sooner or later, I'll end up taking some of the components off of that board and saving them for other projects that I'll be getting into. And this is another item that you'd like to have with, or you should have when you're working with solder, especially if you're going to be taking boards apart like that. And this is a sucker. And you can press it down. Let me see if it, okay, there. Now it's locked in place. And that's the release button. So when you're soldering on a circuit board and you want to, take the solder off of a component so that you can pull that component. You get the solder hot and molten, put this right down on it and then hit this button and it'll suck that solder right up inside of this. Now you can unscrew the tip to get the extra solder out of there. But uh, you, you do need one of those if you're gonna be playing with circuit boards. All right, all right, now next, <clears throat> a question about um, I was showing in one of my older videos uh, in growing tomatoes indoors and using a cocktail 
of hydroponic chemicals, I call it chemicals, but it's actually just all natural stuff, to um, uh, help the growth on those indoors because you don't have a lot of soil, so you gotta keep replacing nutrients in there. So this is what I use, and uh, this is uh, JTMs, and this is the all phase 100, and this is biostimulation for all media, all plants, and all phases of growth. So you mix all of these together, and uh, this is a foliator right here for maximum production of lush green foliage. This is a maximi yield maximizer for maximum size, quality, and quantity of whatever you're growing, like tomatoes. Uh, this is a blossomer. This helps get the blossoms going. And uh, this is just an, uh, a water, calcium for water. And uh, this is 000 on the MPK, but uh, this is good for calcium for the nutrition and helping with photosynthesis. It's got amino acids in it also. All right, so that's, that, that's the uh, cocktail that I was showing in that video, and that's what I use to feed those plants. Also, I like using uh, the nitrozyme here. This is concentrated organic marine algae extract. This is great for plants. Just follow the instructions on here. This is 044, so this has no nitrogen. It's not gonna help you grow leaves real fast on the plant but it will help your blossoms and your um, other production. This stuff is a ripoff. This is rooting powder. And this is sorry, when you're um, cutting, uh, taking cuttings and you want to root them, you're supposed to dip them in this powder. Okay, now if you look here, there it says 0.10%. Okay, 0.10% or 0.1%. So a one-tenth of a percent is the active ingredient. The rest of it is 99.9% is um, other ingredients, other stuff that's in there. You can actually, look at the price on that. You can actually, instead of using that, you could use stuff like um, uh, willow. If you have willow trees around, uh, the uh, juices that come out of willow work great. So you can soak uh, some clippings from willow, willow in the water and then use that water for rooting uh, substance. Also, pure natural honey, bees honey, works great for a rooting compound. You can use that. So I, don't, uh, I don't recommend you spending your money on something like this. It's just ridiculous. There's only 1.1%, one, one tenth of a percent of that in there is actually active ingredient. The rest of it is phony. All right, this is another thing I keep around is uh, potassium sulfate. And this is 0, 0, 0,050. So there's no nitrogen no, and the, and the NP, NPK, sorry. Um, the, you're gonna get the, the most in your potassium on that one because you're, that's what that's for. And that's gonna really help your plants produce. This stuff, I swear by, I call this my go juice. And if you watch some of my older videos from uh, when I was growing my um, orchard outside here before the critters destroyed it, um, I would give them this stuff and boy, I'll tell you what, those things would take off like crazy. And I had first season um, transplants put out here bearing fruit. so. I swear by that. I'll, I'll give you another look at it. This is Jumpstart Plant Tonic. And uh, there's the information on the uh, instructions and so for soaking bare root, uh, rose bushes, things like that. You can also use this for uh, helping rooting, uh, to start rooting on plants. And uh, this has um, uh, the nitrogen at 10% and uh, chel chelated iron and chelated zinc. This is great stuff. I really do um, recommend, if you're gonna be growing plants, to get yourself some of that. It's not cheap, but it's well worth the money. All right, so these are some of my electronics parts here. I, ha I have caps in here, uh, caps, uh, ca capacitors, and uh, the 
wires are different lengths there. They're, those of you who know electronics know that tells you which one is positive, which one is negative, and uh, so forth and so on. And I save little components like this that I get out of um, other electronics units like this here. And uh, this is a relay. I will end up using this for some of my inventions down the line when I'm done building out here and I have more time to hang around. All right, I'm going a little bit long here. I'm gonna speed this up. Uh, there's one of my old circuit boards I pulled out of a, uh, I think that came out of a dishwasher. Um, I got some good sized capacitors on there. I'll be pulling those off of there and saving that stuff. All right, here's the seat to my ATV, all taped up with duct tape. Beautiful, isn't it? All right, so a few videos back, I mentioned that I had found a sofa with some of this uh, anorgahide on it, and or vinyl, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to resurface that seat, and I got it all in here with my stapler all ready to go so that uh, I can uh, work indoors here if it's raining. And as you can see, this is just stapled all the way around. So I'll be pulling all of that and then getting this unit off. Now the foam on this is in, in good shape. It's still nice and soft and, and rubbery, see it? No problem with the foam. So I don't have to replace the foam. I am just going to replace the, uh, the anorgahide on here. And uh, this is black. That is uh, dark brown, a deep, deep chocolate brown.